The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Today we return to the Arboretum at Flagstaff, located at 7,150 feet above sea level. I spent some time at the High Mountain Herb Display with environmental educator Wade Albrecht. Wade, I see you've got the showy milkweed here. That's one I didn't expect to find in an herbal garden. It's a fine specimen to use up here in northern Arizona for a variety of reasons. And uh, one of the, the, the main things I like it for is it attracts a lot of insects and butterflies into a garden. And uh, if you zoom in on this, you'll see that there's a number of uh, species that you could uh, locate. Some of them are very tiny, but they all are driving the, are, are utilizing this plant as a food source. And in fact, this plant also uh, provides uh, uh, a niche for the monarch butterfly, superb habitat, uh, food source. Uh, uh, it lays its eggs on it, and oftentimes in the in the in the late summer, early autumn, you might find a, a, a chrysalis on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've always thought of milkweed as a very invasive plant. I notice you've got it here with a mint, which is also invasive. Purposeful intent in our design here, because uh, uh, mint actually has a capacity to. Uh, almost outcompete any other plant in the herb garden. Looks like a milkweed does pretty well, though. Fights on its own pretty well. Right, right. Which mint is this? Uh, this is peppermint, and uh -huh. peppermint has the uh, has a lot of uses within the household, including herbal teas and, of course, uh, uh, potpourris, and uh, just a, a wonderfully fragrant plant to have in the garden. And one of the characteristics of this plant, should you be in doubt as to if you have a mint on your hands, is to grab the stem and kind of just roll it. And if it's square, if it has four sides, you probably have a mint. I notice right next to it here you've got marjoram. That's another plant in the mint family. Yes, it's a, a wonderful plant to, to have, particularly along the borders of your herb garden or in, in a, a, a rock garden type capacity. The form of this plant, you can see it has a nice mounding effect, mm -hmm. um, very dense growth habit, a, a terrific plant to have right up front in your herb garden. Um, and it's, uh, it's just a wonderful culinary plant that should be a staple in everybody's kitchen. And I see you have some other bright plants right over here. Yes, we got uh, a ceremonial plant by the name of Maltese Cross here. Uh, but more importantly, we, we, we included this in our herb garden to, for color. And the red color of this flower attracts hummingbirds as well as a, a number of other birds and insects to the garden, too. I bet the hummingbirds really do like that. But I see you've got a lot of other colors here. Yes, we have a lot of yellows and blues in this garden as well. I really do like those blue flowers that you've got. This is clary sage, and uh, clary sage is a, is a plant that is problematic in some parts mm -hmm. of the country, but uh, as you can see, it's uh, in the southwest. It can be a, a beautiful inclusion into any herb garden and, and can be controlled. So people should really know about the plants they put in their gardens. Right. You know, I saw a plant in here that's one of the most pettable plants in the garden. One of my favorites as well. Let's go see it. In the garden, there are plants to look at. Occasionally, there are plants to touch. We have to affect all the senses in an herb garden. Well, this one definitely is tactile. Yeah, it's a, a terrific plant uh, for color, uh, touch, uh, 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 and visuals, I think, along borders, in rock gardens. It has many applications. And then another thing we just learned a while ago, it has a square stem. What, do you, what family might that be? It must in? be a mint. Mm -hmm. Wait, thank you so much. You're welcome, Chris. It's a great tour of this herb garden. Glad you enjoyed it. The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.